I think the important part of what the Canadian Museum for Human Rights stands for is that it is a project that comes along once in a generation. There hadn't been a new National Museum in 45 years, and there'd never been a National Museum outside of Ottawa. It, it just wasn't done. Uh, I remember thinking to myself, Museum, Winnipeg, how hard could it be? That was until I seen my first glimpse of the construction drawings or the schematic drawings for this project. That's when I knew I was in for the challenge of my life. We had never, ever undertaken anything remotely like this. We didn't have any experience in building iconic buildings or museums. The one thing my dad, before he passed away, insisted on is that we always bring on the very top people. We talked to everybody. We said, okay, what was your experience with PCL? To me, the word that describes PCL contribution to this project really is proactive teamwork, performance, commitment, passion, knowledge, leadership, collaboration. We talked to some extremely critical, tough, experienced people, and they all uniformly endorsed PCL. This project was bigger than any one individual. It was how can we take a vision that an architect took and molded this iconic building and then passed it over to architects and builders like PCL and said, I'll go build it. Without the support of technologies using high-tech tools such as BDC, we would not have been able to budget, estimate, and plan some of the complex geometric shapes that you see in the building today. The design of this building was very, very complicated. And as a constructor, we were able to design the assist in so many ways. We all realized that this was a very unconventional building, that conventional documents would not be able to do it uh, justice. So an innovative approach was required. It was one of the first projects that our office had done in fully three-dimensional model. BIM modeling was one of the huge helps on our project here. It helped create drawings, visions of what the people needed to build. PCL was successful at taking the 3D geometry, which was found in the model, the 2D renderings, which included section details, and plan view drawings and integrated them into packages that could then go out to the site to properly build uh, what you see around you. The model allowed us to fly into the building virtually and to see what it is that we were building and to get a better grasp of what it is. Take a look at the ramps here, alabaster ramps. You've got LED lighting washing the back of the alabaster stone. We worked out the slopes, we worked out the intervals, we managed to clad it in a, a beautiful material to get that beautiful glowing quality to it. I think it's a very stunning piece to the building and, and really a hallmark of the building. Everything is non-conventional and it challenged us in every step of the way, but it also made uh, what we do day to day even more interesting. Without the use of 3D collaborative technologies, building this project off a two-dimensional platform would have been virtually impossible. What I'm most proud of is that we have a very satisfied client and that this is a project PCL will be forever associated with. When I drive by here with my grandchildren that I'll be able to stop and point up and say, you know, I had a chance to be a part of something that I believe from an education and a human rights standpoint is going to make a difference in creating a better civil society for all of us. When people come here, they're just going to be amazed. They're not going to see another building like it in Canada or the world. It is overwhelming to walk into this building and think that on this spot a decade ago there was a dusty parking lot and through the collective efforts of thousands of people we have created this incredible symbol of Canada's commitment to human rights.